So last episode we tried to fix the emissions problem with snake oil. Now we're going to do it the right way. So I want to get this diff cover off, um, partially because I've seen a little bit of a drip. That way I'll know I have one less friction component to worry about in the emissions test. Um, I did see that underneath here on the drain there's a drain plug on it and the drain plug had a, uh, it looked like somebody just used an uh, RTV and made a little gasket for it so I'm going to have to get a gasket for it. Uh, but I'll just take this guy out, just let the fluid drain first. Before you drain your diff, make sure that you can loosen the fill plug. These are half inch uh, bolts. If you've never worked with gear oil before, the heads up is you'll want to wear gloves because this is the most foul smelling car fluids I know of. I had to use a wrench here because I couldn't get the socket all the way around the bolt. The edge was too close to the weld. When I reinstalled, I stacked washers under the bolt head so that I could get the socket on and off in the future. There we go. Popped off. Now that the seal is broken, she should come right off. All right, that feels like steel. Looks okay in there. Also, all the uh, the gasket material stayed on the uh, stayed on the diff cover, which is nice. The teeth look okay. Hard to really tell. Nothing seems crazy back here. That's definitely a Detroit locker. <laughs> That's good. Clean this guy up and we'll lightly sand the surface, just ever so lightly. All right, I believe this is 100 grit on um, a Durablock, which I know is quite flat. All right, now blow it out. All right, so um, I just cleaned the differential housing. Since I made sure that that is clean, this is ready to go. Um, we're gonna apply this when it's still wet just finger tight so it squishes out. A um, quarter inch to sixteenth of an inch bead. I'm gonna hand tighten this and then I'll grab the camera when I'm torquing everything down. Okay, so I got all the bolts finger tight. You can see right there that the Permatex is starting to uh, seep out the edges, so I'll tighten her up in an hour. All right, so now it's been an hour, so I can go ahead and Crisscross pattern, tighten these guys down. This is the point where I realized I didn't have the right tool for the fill plug. Since I don't have the tool, I'm just gonna measure real quick. That width. So it looks like 14, 14.5 millimeters or 9 sixteenths. All right, so it's a 9 sixteenths hex. All right, so I tried to get a 9 sixteenths um, Allen wrench, but I couldn't find any for a reasonable price. But I found out that a half inch, or at least a half inch bolt that I had, has a 9 sixteenths um, cap area. So I saved this broken socket. It's actually a socket adapter. And I'm going to use that to um, weld this onto this guy. And that fits perfectly inside um, that fill plug. So I'll grind this off to a reasonable length, um, clean this up, and then weld her on, and hopefully there's my um, Allen. I tried to find an o-ring for the drain plug, but after installing it, I thought about it and it had some problems. The problem with this idea is that it's good that it has a, a lock nut on it, because it won't back out, and this is a bolt we don't want to back out. But the problem is the gasket would seal 
on the outside, but then the, the oil might be able to leak in between the threads and then come out through, you know, one of these non-sealed surfaces. So, I'm gonna kinda go back to some other original ideas. After the rubber gasket, I tried nylon washers with a flange bolt. The problem I ran in there was the nylon washers wouldn't stay concentric to the bolt once you tighten it up. The bottom one wants to flare out. Okay, well, yep, I don't like that. All right, so that kind of failed. Um, so now I'm gonna drill 5 16 inch holes. Actually, I'll drill 21 64 inch holes. Three, two, six. That seems pretty good. This is just an old pan. I got actually from Goodwill and used it for um, for motorcycle parts. So I'm going to use a stack of four washers, four custom aluminum washers, see how she works out. Alright, so I think this is finally a solution I can live with. There's still Loctite on that bolt. Hopefully these compress and seal. The welded up socket worked awesome to remove the fill plug. Filling the diff without a proper pointed bottle or pump was a terrible process, so I highly recommend getting something rather than duct taping a hose to a funnel. Alright, it's finally full. Make sure to use thread sealant if you have a fill plug like this that's tapered. Mine leaked without it. The diff cover looks good, now we can get to changing out the cat. Okay, so, so far I have put some PB Blaster on the exhaust manifold collector. And now I'm gonna try to, just wanna loosen them up, but those camera, that one came right off, so that's a good sign. Okay, so, I just wanna show you guys how I was kinda choosing where I was gonna make the cut on um, the catalytic converter. So, on the, tailpipe side I already have kind of a, a flange on the back side and I was deciding where to put this guy and so I was looking where my clearances would be to put like screw these flanges together and it looked like the easiest way to would actually be when this kind of has an upturn to it so you can see it's, it's kind of parallel with the ground mostly here and it goes up that way I can um, come from the bottom and get my um, a ratchet or you know impact whatever I need to get and then on the back side I still have room for an open end wrench so yeah that's the plan all right looks like we're attached up above um, to this thing that welded strip was pretty difficult to remove so I ended up cutting it off and welding the tab so it could be bolted together. Okay, so last time, um, this whole process was a little bit easier because we were um, we were keeping the same components, but uh, just you know making flanges for them. So I was just basically cutting and patching in these pieces. Um, but this time we need to actually replace the component inside of it, and obviously we need the exhaust to keep pulling in the same directions and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I kind of want to use the, the back section and the front section still. So um, what I'm going to do is here use this paint pen to mark the top of each of these and I'll correspond roughly with the top on the new one as well. 
Now, this won't uh, get us, you know, exactly perfect, but hopefully it'll get us in the ballpark and make it a little bit easier to do this install. I don't know why they put this little cap on here, but to pass emissions, you have to take it off, so. Great. Time to make some sparks. When I pulled back the uh, exhaust manifold collector, I found this guy. It's like the flange where it meets up with the uh, ceiling surface. First, before I got, was able to get this piece, I had to go to auto parts stores and I found out quickly that they don't have these auto parts stores. They just have, you know, slip connectors and the type that, uh, you know, they have a different types of connectors, but only the kind that backyard people typically do, not these. And so I went to exhaust muffler shop and you know, they were closing in like 15 minutes, but this is like a five minute job. So I was a little bit upset about that. I was gonna try to adapt a uh, two and a quarter to uh, three inch or something like that and cut it right at the transition. Um, but luckily on my way to O'Reilly's to go try to do that, I, uh, serendipitously happened upon a um, muffler shop that was still open. One short point I want to make here is that I was having a bad day, I couldn't find parts, but you know there are people out there um, in this automotive community that care about what they do and want to help you out. So I encourage anybody who knows some people like that to you know do their best to support them. You can see that this section, you know this section right here, has been replaced at some point. It's a different color than the rest of the exhaust. Um, and they obviously did a bad job here, or something happened. Okay, so then we cut this piece off so that the guy could make this piece, which is pretty cool. He, he uh, expanded it to slip on here so I can make sure that it fits on there correctly, tack it up, and then, you know, fully weld it in. But down here, you can see when they repaired it, it looks like they cut it off with a cutting torch and just left those huge boogers. Now, I'm not really okay with that, so since that's a slip fit and the other one's a slip fit as well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack them both on at the same time. So I'm going to cut this off like I did for the catalytic converter and um, re-weld it on and cut that nastiness off. Look at that, that is disgusting. Somebody paid for this shoddy workmanship. Oh, I just like throw that right on top of it. No big deal. All right, so um, I bolted everything up underneath the truck and then I tack welded both this piece and the, the piece I just had made. Um, everything seems to fit up pretty nicely. I do have to actually. So that's what the O2 sensor looks like. I'm not sure what it's supposed to look like. Um, in person, it's kind of like a whitish, pinkish color. Okay, so the plan is just to kind of submerge the bottom portion of this O2 sensor. Um, pour some water in here. And then a little bit of kitchen soap. Uh, 
those seem to be cleaning it. So after this uh, gets done, I'm gonna spray it with uh, alcohol to kind of get it to dry off. All right, so I ran it six minutes after the initial minute and 30 seconds. And I'm just gonna wipe it off. Now, I'm, one thing I'm worried about with this is that either the water could damage something, which I'm not super worried because exhausts have moisture in them for sure. Um, definitely gonna let it dry out. I'm gonna spray this alcohol on it. It's based off of somebody else's. This is kind of based off of another video I've seen. So yeah, now I'll let this dry overnight and I'll install it in the morning. Um, person that looks pretty good. Um, still has a little bit of a reddish hue to it. I'm not sure if that's because it's rusting and gotten past some of that coating. Um, but yeah, definitely looks cleaner. Um, guess we'll see if we, we pass. It won't really tell us definitively, but um, it might tell you whether or not it's a bad idea if it does terrible. Because this is the only thing I really changed other than um, yeah, a new catalytic converter, but that wouldn't make it run worse, I wouldn't think. so. I almost forgot, but one last thing I'm going to do um, to you know get ready for this mission test is air up these back tires as much as they can go. It looks like it says max load, yeah, 30, 35 PSI it looks like. The noise on this air compressor is pretty unbearable. The main idea behind airing up the tires is to decrease the rolling resistance. So basically, the lower the tire pressure, the more the tire flexes as it rotates. And that's um, causing work on the tire and heating it up and wasted energy. It's like if you have a flat, a close to flat bike tire, it's a lot harder to pedal than a really firm bike tire. Same principle. Seems to be running good. So I drove the truck around, probably about 50 miles or so, because even though I'm not using any kind of fancy fuel additive, I still want to get the catalytic converter hot um, so it burns off um, you know, all the impurities the most efficiently. And I also think I topped it off with gas as well, just have the cleanest gas you could have in the tank. Time to go test the emissions on this beast again. Hopefully we get a better result this time. I passed! That's awesome. If you look at the numbers, they're far more significant than when we just used the fuel additive. Let's take a little quick survey of what we did. Fix the exhaust leak, replace the catalytic converter, clean the O2 sensor, aired up the tires, and made sure to get the catalytic converter hot by warming up the car before the test. Now, it's not very scientific that we did all these things at once. Um, I think the catalytic converter was probably the um, biggest improvement. Um, it's hard to say, the exhaust leak may have also been significant, um, but I don't think anything hurt. These are all things that could contribute to um, getting your vehicle to pass emissions. So thanks for watching, and I hope this video helped you out.